SQL Alchemy is an absolute game changer for any Python application that has a database. It doesn't matter if your Python app is web APIs, data science, or even machine learning. So if you've been searching for an easy and effective way to manage your database in Python, you've come to the right place because we will be diving into SQL Alchemy. This video is gonna be broken up into three main steps. First, I'm gonna be going over what an ORM is. Quick hint, it's what SQL Alchemy is. Second, we will be sharing why we want to use SQL Alchemy. And lastly, we will be going through a coding tutorial that walks through implementation of using SQL Alchemy. If you're new to the channel, my name is Eric Roby. I'm a software engineer with over a decade of experience, and I've helped over 100,000 developers learn and grow within their craft. When I was learning how to code, I was always confused why we learned a backend programming language like Python, and then we had to learn SQL for databases to end up not really using SQL because everything was handled inside the Python code as a Python object. And to be able to handle the database from inside the Python code, we were using something called an object relational mapping. This idea of an ORM allows developers not have to mess with SQL in their everyday life when dealing with CRUD operations. And since ORMs like SQL Alchemy exist, you can simply say you want to add or get this specific Python object from a database instead of writing SQL queries all within your Python code to be able to do it. Now this concept of an ORM, the thing that allows you to do SQL behind the scenes in Python, has been created by many different developers and can be installed via many different libraries. And by far the most popular one is SQL Alchemy. It allows you to interact with your database using Python classes and objects. Instead of writing like raw SQL queries, you can just say, I want this Python object. Now that doesn't mean it removes the ability to write raw SQL queries, but when you don't have to use them, it makes your code just way cleaner, maintainable, and less prone to SQL injection and other security concerns. So that actually brings us to why you want to use SQL Alchemy in the first place. If we wanted a high level of pros to why we should use SQL Alchemy, we could break it down into abstraction, security, and productivity. SQL Alchemy helps with the abstraction because it allows us to be able to remove the complexities that may be associated with SQL queries and instead simply use Python objects to achieve the exact same goal. This makes the code more intuitive, especially if you're a developer that is familiar with OOP concepts. Also, SQL has quite a lot of boilerplate code that can be removed because SQL Alchemy does everything behind the scenes. SQL Alchemy increases productivity due to rapid development because SQL Alchemy can create tables and columns and foreign key relationships all automatically behind the scenes. This allows you to focus on the business logic and not on things that slow down the code. Coding. Now that we have that out of the way, let's dive into the code and create an application where we can learn more about SQL Alchemy. So here we have a empty project. I'm going to go ahead and just create a new main.py file. And inside here, we can now come down here, say, I want to create a virtual environment. And this is just so we can separate all of our concerns throughout all of our projects. And now I want to go into our terminal. And the very first thing we're going to do is just a pip install SQL Alchemy. All right, and that's all we have to do. Now that we have SQL Alchemy installed, we can go ahead and move over the dependencies that we need to make this application work. So just to make it really fast, I'm just gonna say, hey, from SQL Alchemy, we wanna import columns, integers, strings, foreign keys, sequence, create engines, and from the ORM, we're gonna also be implementing some things. And we'll be going over this, but no one wants me to be typing this out. So the next thing that we need to do is create the engine. And the engine is the way that we can connect to the database. So here I'm just gonna say engine equals create engine. And I'm gonna name it SQLite colon slash 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 ORM dot DB. Now, the next thing that we need to do is create the session, and this is used to interact with the database. So I'm gonna say session equals session maker, bind equal engine. And then session equals the new session object. And then we need to create the base class for declarative class definitions. So we can just go ahead and say base equals declarative base. 
Perfect. So now we have all of the simple like boilerplate code out of the way that we need to be able to create SQL Alchemy projects. And the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and create our user model. So what we can do here now is just say class user where we pass in base, which was the base class for the declarative class definition. And then we now can say inside this class user of base, we want to, we need to name the table in our database. So we can say underscore, underscore table name, underscore, underscore equals users. The ID is going to be equal to a column, which is going to be our unique identifier, our primary key. So we can say integer. It's going to be a sequence of our user ID sequence, which we'll go over in a little bit. And then we want to say this is going to be a primary key equals true. We then want to say name equals column string 50. So we can have a new column that says name inside the table. And then we want email equals column string 50 as well. Perfect. So now the really all we need to do now is use this thing called the base metadata create all from the engine. This creates all the tables in the database if they don't already exist. And that's a big thing. It only creates the new table if it doesn't already exist. So it will not enhance the table. It will only create it if it needs to be created. Awesome. So now we just need to go ahead and just create two users. So I'm going to say user one equals user name is Alice and email is Alice at example.com. And then user two is going to be user name Bob at Bob at example.com. And now the very last thing we want to do is use a session to save these two users. So we can say session dot at all, where we pass in a list of user one and user two. And then we can say session dot commit. Perfect. So if we ran this application now and just said Python three main dot pi, we can see that there's going to be a new database called ORM dot DB. If I go ahead inside here and I just say SQLite three ORM DB, and then I say select all from users. We can see that we're going to get back our two users that we just created, which is Alice and Bob. And we were able to just pull these directly from our SQLite 3 database, which is right here. And they added user one and user two. So we were able to create a different. So we were able to create the table. We had our application create the table and then we added two users and then committed it. Now, being able to use SQL Alchemy is fairly straightforward. So what we could also do, I'm going to delete this real quick and just say user equals session dot query where we're going to be passing in our user object. And then I can say dot filter by where we want the name to be Alice. And then we can say dot first at the end. So if I get out of this SQL light, I'm just going to close it out and um, reopen a new one. And if inside here now we go ahead and run our application, we have our user and then we want to print our user. Now, if we go ahead and we run our application, we can see that we get Alice and we simply just queried our user table or our user object filtered by the name Alice and then returned the first user that we get because there should only be one Alice in the entire database. Now, being able to add and delete items is really important. So we were able to fetch an item there. We kind of already went over adding by doing the session dot add. But the next thing that we want to do now is go over how we can delete an item. So right here, after we fetch that user, all we have to do is say session dot delete. Pass in that user and then session dot commit. 
And just like this, this user will be deleted. So if we go ahead and we run this application, and then I'm just gonna open up a new terminal so we can go inside our SQLite 3, and then say select all from users. We can see that there's only gonna be a second user now, and that's gonna be Bob. So we deleted Alice. Now this was pretty easy stuff. What we're gonna do now is get a little bit more creative. We're gonna be adding um, a post table and we're gonna be creating relationships between them. So what I'm gonna do real quick is just close out of that SQLite and I'm going to delete this ORM.DB. And that's because now when we create a new database, it will recreate all of the tables just to make sure that everything is looking good. So now that we have this user, the next thing I want to do is just create a post. So we can say class post where we pass in our base underscore underscore table name underscore underscore equals posts. This is going to be the name of the table in the database. We then can say ID equals column, where we pass in our integer and primary key equals true. Title is going to be equal to our column string 100. Content is just going to be column string with no default value. And then we want our user ID to be our foreign key relationship back to our user. So we can say user ID equals column, and we can pass an integer comma foreign key back to our user's ID. Now this doesn't yet work. We now need to create relationships to the post model by setting up one to many relationship on both sides. So right under our email, inside our user table, we want to say posts equals relationship back to our post where we back populate to our user. And now inside our posts, we want to do the same thing. But this time we're going to say user equals relationship of our user and back populates to post. Perfect. So now that we have our tables all created for relationships, let's go ahead and just add some posts under our users. So I'm just going to say post one equals post with the title Alice's first post content. This is the content of Alice's first post with user equals user one. And just like that, so I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger for us to be able to read. We can just go ahead and copy this two more times. But what I'm going to say is post two and post three. We're going to say Alice's second post. This is the content of Alice's second post. And they're going to keep the same user. But this one's going to be about Bob. So we can say Bob's first post. This is the content of Bob's first post. And then user is going to be user two, which is going to be Bob right here. And then what we want to do is what we did before. We just added a bunch of items. So we can say session dot at all, where we pass in a list of all of these items. So we can say user one, user two, post one, post two, and post three. And then session dot commit. So the first thing we can do is query and join the post and user tables and retrieve the posts with their author. So right now, each post doesn't have their author. We have this user equals user one and user user equals two user two. But what we can do is join these inside a query. And to do that, we can say posts with users. And we can say this is equal to our session dot query, where we pass in our post and user dot join on user dot all. 
And now what we can do is we can just loop through all of this and we can say for post and user and post with users, print our post title and our author. by saying user.name. And I guess just to make this a little bit cleaner, we can do some Python F formatting. All right. And oop, this is supposed to be user. All right. So now if we run our application, this will um, create all of our tables. And then we can see that we're going to get Alice's first post Alice, Alice's second post Alice, and then Bob's first post Bob. And that's because we're printing the title and then we're getting the user author at the very end. Awesome stuff. So the next thing that we can do since we've went over joins is we can go ahead and query to retrieve posts authored just by Alice. And we can also go ahead and do some more advanced queries. So just for us to start, we can say Alice equals session dot query. We pass in the user dot filter by and then our name equals Alice dot first. And then we can just say for post in alice.posts where we can just print the title of post.title and content is post.content. And if we went ahead and just ran this application, whoops, that is because it's a lowercase t. There we go. I didn't save. There we go. So here we can see Alice's posts only. Now the next thing we can do is just going to be an advanced query where we're going to join posts and user tables and filter the posts authored by Alice. So let's go ahead and just say, Hey, this is going to be our advanced query. And here we're just going to say filtered posts equals session dot query. where we pass in our post dot join our user dot filter our user dot name is equal to Alice dot all. And then we can simply just go ahead and print out the filtered posts. So we can say four posts and filtered posts where we want to print a F string of title post title and author post dot user dot name. And boom, if we go ahead and just run this application, we can see right here, we get all of the information right here from our filtered posts. Awesome, awesome stuff. So here we go. This is how we can create relationships and do simple actions inside here. Now, one more cool thing that we can do is right up here inside our create engine. If we go ahead and say echo equals true. If we now run the application and we scroll up, it will show us the queries in SQL in which SQL Alchemy is creating behind scenes, which allows us to be able to do all of this under the hood just using an ORM. So that's what we wanted to show you in this video, and I will see you in the next.